As animals go, owls are pretty awesome. I mean, just look at Hedwig. There are about 200 owl species on Earth, and you'll find them on every continent except Antarctica. They can be as small as the sparrow-sized elf owl, or as huge as the eagle-sized great gray. And most are nocturnal loners with broad heads, an upright stance, big front-facing eyes, and gnarly talons. Many cultures associate owls with either wisdom or death. And though they aren't quite as bright as some other birds, like crows or ravens, the death thing might not be so far off. Because if there's one thing owls are really good at, it is killing things. Quietly. You might even say that they're the ninjas of the bird world, equipped with some unique adaptations that make them experts at both hunting and getting their creep on. Let's start with their feathers. For example, maybe you've been out walking at some point and you heard some whooshing sound, only to look up and see a bird flying overhead. Well, odds are that was not an owl making that noise. Most birds have smooth, sleek primary feathers, which create a noisy kind of turbulence as their wings collide with the air. And that's fine if you're a plant-eating goose or, say, a falcon who's so fast it doesn't doesn't matter if your prey hears you coming because they're already toast, but to a night-hunting owl, catching dinner is all about stealth. So their feathers are specially adapted to reduce that air turbulence and the noise that comes with it. Instead of a smooth, stiff leading edge, an owl's primary feathers look more like combs. Those serrated edges actually break up the air as it hits the wings, creating a bunch of smaller, less noisy disturbances in the air. And even those get muffled by a softer fringe at the trailing edge of the wing. But owls also come equipped with an extra silencer. Their smaller down feathers feathers, which absorb whatever noise is left over. Magic feathers are awesome and all, but probably the first thing you'll notice about an owl are their ridiculously huge front-facing eyes, which can weigh up to 5% of their body weight. All the better to see you with. Because most owls are nocturnal, their eyes need to be good at processing whatever light is available. So owl eyes have large corneas and pupils that allow extra light to enter the eye and funnel back into the image-forming retina. And compared to many other birds, owl retinas contain more of the light-sensitive rods that help them see in low-light conditions. Plus, the front-facing setup lets owls look forward with both eyes, giving them a wider range of binocular vision than most birds. It also helps them judge distance and dimensions, kind of like how humans do it. But it is not easy to squeeze such big eyes into a comparatively small skull, so owl eyes aren't round like a typical eyeball. Instead, they're more elongated and tube-shaped. They're also fixed into their sockets by rings of bone called sclerotic rings, which means owls can't roll their eyes, and if they want to look to the side, they have to turn their whole head. That said, contrary to popular belief, no owl can go full Linda Blair and rotate their head all the way around, though they can rotate them three quarters of the way in either direction, which is still pretty impressive. I mean, imagine looking to your right by turning your head all the way to your left. It's hard to picture for a good reason, because if you tried it, you would either cut off the flow of blood to your brain and have a stroke, tear an artery, or simply snap your neck. And in any of those cases, you would be dead. So. You know, don't try it. But how come owls can do that? Well, for starters, they have more vertebrae in their necks, 14 compared to our 7. And their heads are connected to their necks by just one pivot joint as opposed to our 2. This single joint gives the bird's head much more flexibility, allowing it to pivot its head on the vertebra column, sort of like how you can pivot your body on one foot. Those neck bones also feature extra large holes, about 10 times larger than the artery that passes through them, and probably hold air sacs that help cushion that fragile artery while the owl twists its neck so it doesn't tear. But in 2012, a research team from Johns Hopkins discovered that there's more to the owl neck rotation puzzle. They found that while most animals' arteries typically get smaller the farther they are from the heart, an owl's main neck artery actually gets a little bigger as it nears the brain, ballooning out. Those larger areas might act as reservoirs, storing a little extra blood to send to the brain when the main vessel gets temporarily blocked during more extreme neck rotation. So, Here's to Hedwig and all her other fellow owls, master ninja birds of the night. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow, which was brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of you people. If you want to be one of those people, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow. And if you just want to keep getting smarter with us, go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. Food products from animals like yak, reindeer, water buffalo, elk, and horses. In the US and Europe, dairy consumption is mostly limited to the mammary secretions of sheep, goats, and...